Now let us discuss flux quantization in a superconducting ring. We prove that the total magnetic flux that passes through a superconducting ring may assume only quantized values that means discrete values. Integer multiples of the flux quantum, the flux quantum is given as twice pi h cross c over q, this is in CGS unit, the quantum of flux in a superconducting ring where q has been determined from experiment to be minus twice e that is twice of the electronic charge, the charge of an electron pair, the Cooper pair. Flux quantization is a beautiful manifestation of a long range quantum effect in which the coherence of the superconducting state extends over a ring or a solenoid. Let us first consider the electromagnetic field as an example of a similar boson field. The electric field intensity, let us write it as E r, acts qualitatively as a probability field amplitude. When the total number of photons is large, the energy density may be written as for large number of photons 1 over 4 pi in CGS unit. E star R E R which is nearly equal to N a function of R times H cross omega where N is the number density of photons with frequency omega. So, we are just taking this example of photons in electromagnetic field to understand what could be the situation with uh, BCS state, the flux of a magnetic field. Now, we may write the electric field in a semi classical approximation in the following way. E r is nearly equal to 4 pi h cross omega power half times n r power half times E power i theta a function of r. And similarly, E star the complex conjugate can be approximately written as 4 pi h cross omega power half n r power half E power minus i theta a function of r, where theta r is the phase of the field. Theta, a function of R, this is the phase of the field. A similar probability amplitude describes the Cooper pair. The arguments that follow apply to a boson gas with a large number of bosons in the same orbital. We then can treat the boson probability amplitude as a classical quantity just as the electromagnetic field is used for photons. Both amplitude and phase are then meaningful and observable. 
the arguments do not apply to a metal in the normal state because an electron in the normal state acts as a single unpaired fermion that cannot be treated classically. We first show that a charged boson gas obeys London equation. We consider psi r to be the particle probability amplitude. has similar meanings like a wave function. We suppose that the pair concentration is given as n which is written as psi star psi. We assume this to be a constant. at absolute 0, n would be one half of the concentration of electrons in the conduction band for n refers to pairs. Then we may write psi as n power half e power i theta r and psi star can be similarly written as n power half e power minus i times theta r the phase factor. The phase theta r is important for what we will do next. The velocity of a particle as we can write from Maxwell's sorry Hamilton's equations we can write the velocity as 1 over m p the momentum minus q over c times the vector potential which is 1 over m in terms of quantum operators minus i h cross del operator minus q over c times the vector potential. This is in CGS units. The particle flux that can be given from this expression for velocity coming from Hamilton's equation as psi star v psi equals n over m h cross gradient of theta minus q over c times the vector potential. So, the electric current density can be given as j equals q times psi star v psi which is equal to n q over m h cross gradient of theta minus q over c times the vector potential. everything so far is in CGS unit. We take the curl of both sides of this equation and that gives us curl of j equals curl of a gradient which goes to 0 and what we are left with is curl of A that term we are left with n q squared over m c times curl of the vector potential is the magnetic field. This is in CGS units.
here we use the fact that the curl of a gradient of a scalar that always goes to 0 to uh, get rid of the contribution from this term. We recall that the Meissner effect is a consequence of the London equation. Quantization of the magnetic flux through a ring is a dramatic consequence of this equation, the equation of the current density here. Now, let us consider, let us take, uh, discuss the picture of a ring, superconducting ring. Let us consider the superconducting ring like this. between these two lines that we have drawn here and the material, the superconducting material exists and the flux through the ring is something that we are interested in. The flux lines go like this. somewhat like this. Now, we take a closed path through the interior of the superconducting material. We mark it in red here. This is through the interior of the superconducting material. That means, inside the superconducting material does not go outside. we take a closed path that we call C. The Meissner effect tells us that the magnetic field and the current would be 0 in the interior. Now, the current is 0. If we put current 0 in this equation here, equation of the J, then we will obtain h cross c gradient of theta equals q times the vector potential, because only this part going to 0 can make the current 0. Then, we can write down that a closed integral over c, closed line integral over c of the gradient of theta dot d L, the line integral equals theta 2 minus theta 1 for the change of phase on going once around the ring. The probability amplitude psi that we have considered earlier is measurable in the classical approximation. So, that psi must be single valued. and theta 2 minus theta 1 that must be integer multiple of twice pi, twice pi s where s is an integer. Now, if we apply Stokes theorem, we can write closed line integral over a dot d l will give us surface integral bounded by this curve c of curl of a dot d a, where d a is an area element curl of A equals B, the magnetic field B dot d A and surface integral of B dot d A gives us the flux, which is this is the flux. d A is an area element on the surface uh, bounded by the curve C and phi is the magnetic flux through the curve C. Comparing previous equations that we have obtained earlier, we can now write 
twice pi h cross c s equals q times phi. That means, phi can be expressed as twice pi h cross c over q times s, where s is an integer. Therefore, we find that the flux through the ring is quantized in integer multiples of twice pi h c over q. By experiment, we mentioned earlier that q was found to be minus twice e that is uh, as appropriate for electron pairs. So, the quantum flux in, is in a superconductor it can be written as phi naught that is the quantum of flux. An integer multiple will give the actual flux. So, this quantum of flux can be written as twice pi h cross c over twice of the electron uh, the charge of a proton that is 2.0678 into 10 power minus 7 gauss centimeter square. And if we write in SI unit, phi naught can be written as twice pi h cross over twice e, c is not there, which is nearly equal to 2.0678 into 10 power minus 15 tesla meter square. The flux quantum is called fluxoid or fluxon. The flux through the ring is the sum of the external flux that we can write as F E x T and the superconducting flux the flux coming from the superconductor. Normally, there is no quantization condition on the flux from external sources. Therefore, the superconducting flux has to adjust itself appropriately. That means, the current through the superconductor has to adjust itself appropriately. So, that this sum is always quantized in terms of phi naught. It should be an integer multiple of phi naught. That is all from now.